Muslim right concerns has said that those criticizing President Muhammadu Buhari over the state of insecurity in the country should be objective in their criticisms. This was contained in a statement by director of the group, Professor Ishak Akitola. Akitola claimed that the insecurity challenge ravaging the country at the moment was born from the failures of the past administration. He said Buhari's critics were simply being unfair to the administration. The statement reads, he said it has been observed that critics of the Buhari administration on the state of insecurity is the country in the country today have narrowed their perspective on attacks which occurred during the period of the current administration alone, without considering the circumstances both in the remote and immediate past. Such a parameter is bound to produce a narrow parochial and unfair assessment. We call on critics to be retrospective. Today was born from the wounds of yesterday. The current situation must not be judged in isolation. There are precedents to be considered. Those who refuse to just suppose past events with current happenings have been unjust to both the Buhari administration and history. Just as Nigerians must not trace the roots of banditry and insurgency to northern youth alone, but go beyond them, so must commentators on the current insecurity trace the ugly phenomenon to past regimes if they want to be objective in their assessments. To that extent, therefore, Nigerians must interrogate what happened to funds meant for the acquisition of weapons for the military in the days of ex-president Gulag Jonathan. $2.1 billion was diverted to the private pockets of politicians. That is the exact cost of the Lagos Ibadan dual carriage modern rail line. Unfortunately, corrupt corporates are the same people shouting loudest over insecurity today. The Chibok guests would have been rescued hours after they were abducted if Jonathan had acted promptly. But he dilly dallied for three weeks, claiming it was a plot hatched by his political enemies. It was this procrastination that gave Boko Haram the chance, the chance to dig in. Characteristically, today, critics cannot spell Jonathan's name. A structure can only be as good as its foundation. Nullity upon nullity can only be nullity. You cannot build reality on sheer phantom. Those who stole the country dry and denied our military the much-needed weaponry, including those who failed to act on time, laid the foundation for today's wars. Buhari is merely trying to salvage the situation. Yet our last look at the more must not stop at the days of the Jonathan regime alone. For instance, Nigerians would have not been hearing of Boko Haram today if the threat had been nipped in the bud in the days of Chief Olusha Gumbasanjo and Yaradra. Insecurity has come a long wind path. The blame should not be laid on the doorsteps of President Muhammadu Buhari. The blame should go straight to where it belongs. <laughs> it's in fact, as I'm just going through this, in fact, my, my head is just, every my even my thumb is just turning, turning. And he said we must also not forget the negative role played by fifth columnist politicians, particularly the Saraki-led, unpatriotic and anti-people senators and members of the House of Representatives of his days, including Saraki's co-traveler, Yakubu Dogara, S. Speaker. These were lawmakers who sabotaged efforts, all efforts made by the Buhari regime to acquire arms for the Nigeria military for a whole four years, 2015 to 2019. Saraki and Dogara were planted in the National Assembly by those who feared an eighth year of Hurricane Buhari. They allowed Boko Haram to become too powerful. It is therefore paradoxical that the same senator Saraki now wants to contest as Nigeria's president. It is certain that the affliction of the disease called collective amnesia has reached a pandemic stage in Nigeria. We forget so quickly that our Numero uno public enemy becomes our hero as soon as our tears dry up. How could we have forgotten so soon? Bombings in Abuja reached high crescendo. 
the United Nations Building, Nigeria Police Headquarters, EFCC Headquarters, Nyanya Motor Park, Mosque, Churches, and so on, were not spared by terrorists. Suicide bombers had a feed day between 2011 and 2015. Who was in power then? Was it Buhari? Why are critics now narrowing everything down to the to this regime? How can we be so ungrateful? Who did this to Nigeria? Who did this to Nigeria? What crime are the security agencies committed that we refuse to appreciate them in spite of their huge sacrifices and successes? The U.S. Army is a great force to reckon with today because the citizens appreciate them. Where are the suicide bombers today? The security agencies stop the menace of suicide bombing, but we see don't even want to appreciate them. Residents of Meduguri are now sleeping with calm. Who did that? No, Nigeria administration has acquired so much weaponry for the military like Buhari. Hey, let me just be answering this, man. Now that you have, you said the people for four years that you did not acquire all this uh, weaponry for the military because of Saraki and Dugara. Now that you have your people both at lower and upper chamber, what has changed? And you have bought enough equipment. So what is delaying it? We challenge those critics to draw up a honest comparative list of the performance and moral of the military under previous regimes and the Buhari administration. It is on record that Nigerian troops used to take over, take cover in neighboring countries on sighting insurgents who were always armed to the teeth. The reverse is the case today as Boko Haram fighters take to their heels when faced by our gallant soldiers. The same people that say, Take the fight to the doorstep of the military. It's not you are telling us. Oh my goodness! Oh, thousands of them have also surrendered, and no Nigeria government has recruited policemen in an aggressive manner like we have have it today under Buhari. The numerical strength of the police, which was at a standstill, one hundred and thirty thousand from two thousand and three to twenty fifteen, has been boosted by Buhari with ten thousand recruitment annually. Can you beat that? Conservatively, uh, <laughs> conservatively, Nigeria must have at least 136,000 men at 2022. While it may be true that as President Buhari is responsible for the lives and properties of Nigerians, we must remember that security should not be left for left to soldiers and policemen alone. So people who are not carrying weapons should be the ones to work or to do, do what are the people paid. Every citizen must be security conscious and they are expected to feed the security agencies with useful information we must be be their ears and eyes but what do we get from nigerians they are the ones cutting rails to sell them they cut aluminium railing on bridges they destroy infrastructure why do some people think Buari must be blamed for 16 years of recklessness, 16 years of impunity, 16 years of uh, corruption with board, without borders? Our assessment of the security situation must also be retrospective. Government is a continuum, is a continuum and the Buari regime cannot be an exception. Therefore, it can only continue from where its predecessor stopped. The Jonathan regime bequeathed a legacy of insecurity to the Buhari administration. It is a relay race. What is passed to you is what you bid on. <laughs> Unfortunately, this regime received a disadvantage batting and it is doing